season is a division of the year based on changes in weather, ecology, and the number of daylight hours in a given region. The four seasons spring, summer, fall, and winter follow one another regularly. Each has its own light, temperature, and weather patterns that repeat yearly. We all might have heard about the equinox and solstice. The equinox and solstice define the transitions between the seasons of the astronomical calendar and are a key part of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. The equinoxes are the only time when both the northern and southern hemispheres experience roughly equal amounts of daytime and nighttime. And the solstices are the planet's longest and shortest days of the year. Have you ever wondered how seasons are happening? The seasons on Earth change because the planet is slightly tilted on its axis as it travels around the sun. This means different points on Earth receive more or less sunlight at different times of year. If Earth were not tilted, the sun would always appear to be directly above the equator. The amount of light a given location receives would be fixed and there would be no seasons. Before moving forward to the equinox and solstice, we will quickly go through some important terms used further in this topic. The first one is the equator. An equator is a circle of latitude that divides Earth into the northern and southern hemispheres. Next one is the rotational axis. The rotational axis of Earth is the imaginary line that passes through both the North Pole and South Pole. Now let's see what an Earth's rotation means. Earth's rotation or Earth's spin is the rotation of planet Earth around its own axis, as well as changes in the orientation of the rotation axis in space. If viewed from above the North Pole, the Earth turns counterclockwise, and from above the South Pole, the Earth turns clockwise. Now we will see what Earth's orbit means. An orbit is the path an object follows as it moves around another one. Earth moves in an elliptical shape around the Sun once every 365.25 days. We call that path Earth's orbit. Earth orbits the Sun at an average distance of 149.60 million kilometers in a counterclockwise direction as viewed from above the northern hemisphere during which time Earth has traveled 940 million kilometers. Next point is the ecliptic plane or orbital plane. The orbital plane of a revolving body is the geometric plane in which its orbit lies. Next is the orbital axis. An orbital axis is the line perpendicular to its orbital plane. Now we will see what an axial tilt means. In astronomy, axial tilt, also known as obliquity, is the angle between an object's rotational axis and its orbital axis, which is the line perpendicular to its orbital plane. Equivalently, it is the angle between its equatorial plane and orbital plane. The Earth's obliquity or axial tilt is 23.44 degrees. Now we will see what an axial parallelism means. Axial parallelism, also called gyroscopic stiffness, inertia, or rigidity, or rigidity in space, is the characteristic of a rotating body in which the direction of the axis of rotation remains fixed as the object moves through space. Another term to measure here is subsolar point. The subsolar point on a planet is when its sun looks like it is directly overhead. Next is the Tropic of Cancer. The Tropic of Cancer, also known as the Northern Tropic, is the most northerly circle of latitude on Earth at which the sun can be directly overhead. This is approximately 23 degree 27 minute north of Earth's equator. Next is the Tropic of Capricorn. The Tropic of Capricorn is the southernmost circle of latitude on Earth at which the sun can be directly overhead. This is approximately 23 degree 27 minutes south of Earth's equator. As explained earlier, we all know that the Earth is rotating in a tilted axis, and the tilt remains the same, while orbiting the Sun. 
Miss Tilt, and the almost round orbit makes the seasons happen on Earth, as the amount of light and daytime in both hemispheres varies throughout the year. For about six months in a year, the North Pole is tilted toward the Sun, and the Sun lies somewhere above the Northern Hemisphere. For the other six months, the South Pole is tilted toward the Sun, and the Sun lies somewhere overhead in the Southern Hemisphere. It is a gradual shift. That means the tilt will increase from zero to 23.44 in about three months' time and back to zero in the next three months. And the same thing continues in the next six months. In other words, the subsolar point continuously varies between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn throughout the year. An equinox happens on the days when the Earth's axis tilt is zero and solstice is when the North or South Pole tilt towards the Sun is at its maximum. That means there will be two equinoxes and solstices every year. The equinoxes are on March 19th, 20th or 21st and September 22nd or 23rd, and the solstices on June 20th or 21st and December 21st or 22nd. We will start with the equinox. Equinox descends from equus, the Latin word for equal or even, and nox, the Latin word for night, a fitting history for a word that describes days of the year when the daytime and nighttime are equal in length. On Earth, there are two equinoxes every year, one around March 19, 20 or 21, and another around September 22 or 23. We have different definitions for equinox. Here are some of them. An equinox is an event in which a planet's subsolar point passes through its equator. It is the two times of the year when the Earth's axis is tilted neither toward nor away from the Sun. It is the two times of the year when the center of the Sun is directly above the equator, and day and night are approximately equal in length. All of them are true in their own perspective. Composing all these, equinox is an event that happens twice a year, when the daytime and nighttime are equal in length and occurs due to Earth's rotation, axial tilt, and axial parallelism. Let's start with the equinox that happens on March. Let's assume there are three axes for Earth. We can call them as x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And here the Earth's axial tilt is in y-axis and is 23.44 degrees in yz plane. As we see in the video, on this particular day, the yz plane becomes perpendicular to the sun rays. And this makes the subpolar point pass through the equator. Equal amount of sunlight in both hemispheres, equal amount of day and night throughout Earth. We can see these red dots placed in different parts of the Earth's surface takes equal amounts of time for day and night. This means the day and night time is equal on this particular day throughout Earth. In the Northern Hemisphere, this is called the vernal equinox, and it marks the beginning of spring. In the Southern Hemisphere, this is called the autumnal equinox, and it marks the beginning of autumn. We will explain why it marks the beginning of different seasons in both hemispheres. As we move forward in Earth's orbit and pass through each month, we can see the ZY plane gradually becoming parallel to the Sun's rays direction due to axial parallelism. As the axial tilt is in the same plane, it becomes tilted towards the Sun in the Northern Hemisphere and away from the Sun in the Southern Hemisphere. Due to this, the subsolar point starts to move from equator to Tropic of Cancer. This makes the Northern Hemisphere receive more sunlight than the Southern Hemisphere. This results in the spring season in the Northern Hemisphere and autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, let's have a look into the first solstice. By 20th or 21st June, the YZ plane becomes exactly parallel to sun rays. Thus, the Earth tilt becomes highest towards the Sun in the Northern Hemisphere and lowest in the Southern Hemisphere. This makes the subpolar point pass through the Tropic of Cancer. This results in solstice, a summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere and a winter solstice in the Southern Hemisphere. And that means the Northern Hemisphere will experience the longest day and shortest night, which marks the beginning of summer there. 
the southern hemisphere will have the shortest day and longest night, which marks the beginning of winter there. As you can see with these red dots movement, this day and nighttime difference will be least in the equator and highest in the poles. One more interesting thing is, there won't be any nights in the Arctic Circle and no days in Antarctic Circle these days, as the area inside the Arctic Circle will be completely tilted and exposed to sun rays, and the Antarctic Circle will not receive any sunlight throughout those days. Now, once we move forward through July and August, we can see the YZ plane again becoming perpendicular to the sun rays gradually, and the subsolar point starts to move towards the equator. By around 23rd of September, the YZ plane again becomes perpendicular to the sun rays and the subsolar point passes through the equator. This marks the second equinox of the year, equal amount of day and night throughout Earth. This marks the beginning of autumn in the northern hemisphere and is called the autumnal equinox there, and vernal equinox in the southern hemisphere as it marks the beginning of spring there. It is because for about six months, starting from the equinox in March till the equinox in September, the Northern Hemisphere was receiving more sunlight. And then from there onwards, the Southern Hemisphere will starts to receive more sunlight as the subsolar point starts to move towards Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere. By around 21st or 22nd of December, the subsolar point reaches the Tropic of Capricorn, resulting in the second solstice. It will be a winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere and a summer solstice in the Southern Hemisphere. That means the Northern Hemisphere will experience the shortest day and longest night, which marks the beginning of winter there. The Southern Hemisphere will have the longest day and shortest night, which marks the beginning of summer there. And as you see, there will be all night towards the Arctic Circle and all day towards the Antarctic Circle during this time. As we move forward through the next few months, we can see the YZ plane again becoming perpendicular to the sun rays gradually, and the subsolar point starts to move towards the equator. We will experience winter in the northern hemisphere and summer in the southern hemisphere, and the cycle will continue through next year's equinox on March. Now let's see the whole events in a single shot. Here we have a diagram representing the main events. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.